Okay folks, so here we have part two and we're leaving off from part one yesterday. I've already established that Brian Smith was running this business prior to when he applied for the legal rights to have any kind of work in the Philippines. This is three years ago as you can see. Um, he didn't apply for his 13A until just under 18 months ago. Um, so when he was doing this fish pen business with Jason, who also was on a tourist visa, they were breaking every immigration and BOI rule that they could possibly break, which means that anybody involved in that, a spouse for example, was breaking the anti-dummy laws, there's no doubt about that. But let's continue because this is an interesting part where he drops his employee right in it, and I'll explain as we go. Uh, this is another matter for taxation, which I've pointed out in various emails. They have this, um, uh, what do you call it, copy of this video clip, and I've given them the timestamp coming up very shortly. Um, so someone else is in tax problems. Now, I'll explain that in a minute. Or any other uh, fish pen managers or owners or operators to get angry with us. Because we were paying such a high salary. Now, what he's going to tell you now, ladies and gentlemen, is beyond the realms of um, stupidity. Listen to the time frame and that he said he paid the salary in and how much. And then I'll explain why someone is now in trouble. Have a listen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, has anybody got a calculator in their hand? Um, where's mine? Hang on a second. Um, I've got one here somewhere. How did I do it? Oh, there it is. So, if we have a look, ladies and, and gentlemen, let's have a look here. We'll turn her on. So, 130.000, divided by six months equals 21,666 pesos per month. Now that can't be right. Times six equals. Yeah, it is. So he's paying him 21,000 pesos a month to look after a fish pen. I don't believe a word of that. But what I can tell you and what anybody can do is if you Google um, this in the Philippines, if you Google the salary, you can find out for yourself that salaries of 90,000 pesos plus have to be taxed. You can only earn it. Now, that's per year. Smith just said that that was only six months' salary. Remember all the time this was going on, he was telling everybody on his channel, we've got no budget, we're poor, send me money. Gabriel is now liable for tax on that money, 130,000 pesos, because it's above the threshold of 90,000 pesos per year when an employee has to pay tax. Did you pay the tax, Smith, or did Gabriel pay the tax? Uh, very interesting um, to, to wonder about that. Did you pay the pass I big, the triple S, and the 13-month salary? So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, he's not only dropped Gabriel in it, he's dropped himself in it as the employer. Gee, that's funny. You felt Gabriel was well worth it. 
Um, while all this was now, remember this is after all the uh, problems at the fish pen, after he accused Gabrielle of being a thief, after he went nuts at Gabrielle for taking a two-week holiday and leaving his cousin or somebody in charge, after he ran Gabrielle down into the ground, but he's sitting there saying we felt Gabrielle was uh, worth it. Well, what's the truth? Did he think he was worth it or did he think that he was a thief? I mean, that question still hasn't been answered. So what's your answer to that, Smith? Uh, fuel cost, is, again, this is another area where uh, much could be done to lessen this expense. The two and sometimes three times a week jobs to buy to get feed cost a lot of fuel. Um, running around in town trying to find it, uh, burn, you're just burning gas. Sometimes I'd go to a buy and they would be out of stock, they wouldn't have any. And so I'd have to go back here to Taliban. So there we have another admission, ladies and gentlemen, that he is working directly on for and behalf of the fish pond, running around driving to Ubai to find fish food, which means that he is directly involved in a capacity as a support worker or worker of the fish pen, which he has no legal right to be a part of in any capacity whatsoever. Um, the plot thickens, ladies and gentlemen. Every time this guy opens his mouth, he just digs his grave deeper and deeper. out with 10 or 16, 10 or 15 sacks of feed, the back and forth with the boats, uh, that takes, that takes a lot of fuel as well. So our fuel expense was 90,631 pesos, which I would... Now I've given this, these two videos, I had to split them up into two, because as I keep explaining, my camera splits out, so I had to send them two links to these two videos. I explain it far more succinctly, politely and uh, professionally than what I'm saying here to BOI. But he continually points out his particular involvement in this fish pen, which means that he does have a capacity in the fish pen. This is him on video saying it. BOI and BIR are now fully aware of it. Get out of that, Smithy. Extrapolate out in the future would be about one fifth of that. I, I wouldn't anticipate more than uh, twenty thousand as a fuel expense uh, moving forward. Boat cost and repair, and this is for both boats. This is for um, both the boss lady and the Prince William. Now we didn't put the initial costs of the boats or the purchase price of the boats in this. This is uh, both boats have been hauled. One thing I'd like to point out, ladies and gentlemen, any businessman that's giving a profit and loss statement would somewhere along the line, with all these costs, he's telling us all these hundreds of thousands of pesos of costs that he's got, a businessman anywhere would say, well, we wrote that off in depreciation and the tax department allowed us X pesos in depreciation. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, there is an absolute utter and total lack of any taxation liability or availability to have anything written off. Not a single mention. So, ladies and gentlemen, it begs the question, where is the tax content? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what BIR are looking into right now. Oh, shoot. Where were we? Sorry, that was my fault. You know what I love about four wheel drive? Sorry, we'll get back there. I'm hopeless at this. Uh, burn is, you're just burning gas. It's so 80,631 pesos, which I would extrapolate out. Oh, here we go. He's using a big word that he doesn't really understand. Sanded, epoxied, 
rotten wood removed, new wood put in. Uh, yeah, now, ladies and gentlemen, anybody repairing their equipment or their um, infrastructure for a business would obviously write that down on their tax return as a loss. No mention of this anywhere here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, who in business out there will take, for example, a certain trucker in the Philippines who um, I'm sure that he writes off the cost of his tires or a, a new rim if it gets busted going over a pothole or he would write off, say, a busted windscreen or a dented fender, um, all sorts of uh, equipment costs he would write off on his tax, wouldn't he? To get a rebate on that. But notice how Smitty here never mentions a single write off for all these costs and losses. Uh, do you think that BIR would be wondering why they've never received any information from him about all these losses? I would think so. Any businessman would think so. Painted. Those expenses will be less moving forward, who knows? Uh, the total expenses were 62,358 pesos. Uh, permits, permit cost for the pen and the boats uh, was 22,253 pesos. <coughs> Pardon me, folks. Pardon me. <coughs> Well, that may well have been the cost for permits, Brian. <laughs> but did you pay it, and where are they? I think it's now fully up to you after these last two videos. You said that you're not going to show any permits because you didn't want to um, give me any satisfaction. Well, you're not giving me any satisfaction because I know you haven't got them. You now have to show them to your people and to your channel to prove you've got any credibility at all. It's not up to whether or not... I, I, I couldn't give a rat's ass about looking at your permits. I know you haven't got any. You now have to show your people, your channel, your followers, that you've got them because you've got nowhere else to go, Smith. You're out of credibility. Uh, and that's an expense that will uh, be made pretty much unless the cost of the permits goes up. Uh, that's what it pretty much will remain in the future. Harvest expenses, nets, net rent, uh, boat rent, and salaries for the harvest crews. Uh, I'll give you an example, folks. <coughs> he said that there's documented proof <coughs> in his video <coughs> that he's got all these permits. <coughs> No, we've seen one video where they went to DTI, Department of Trade and Industry, and paid 230 pesos for an application for a business name. We never saw a follow-up video to say, well, the application's been approved and this is the permit, have we? So he's made a video that he says is proof. No, there's no proof whatsoever. Even just a permit number, Smith, and the date it was issued would be something. But your pathetic, weak excuse that you don't want me to give the you don't want to give the satisfaction to me of actually seeing what you've got, that wore thin a long time ago, Smitty. Wore thin a long time ago, not only with me. Your own mongs wanna to know too. Oh, so there we go. This was only the first harvest where he's paid commissions to people. Hasn't paid any tax, hasn't mentioned anything about that, but this is only the first harvest. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and I pointed out the timestamp of 1442 where he started saying this. Remember, it was a long and detailed email that accompanied this video clip to BIR. They're looking at everything. To a woman to help us sell in Cebu. It was an expensive uh, lesson, and uh, not that it was uh, a 
catastrophe or anything. I mean, we harvested the fish and we sold them. But uh, not having our own setup with the proper harvest net. Harvest net uh, we have the, harvested the fish and we sold them. Hmm. Very interesting. Stopped us from being able to harvest all our fish that first harvest. Because at that... If you're going to do a country radio station... Yeah, let's have another ad. At that time, they would have all fit on the boat that we rented. The, um, the capacity on that boat was 150 boxes of fish, and we ended up putting 115 on it. And uh, All good details for the tax man, Brian. Thank you. fish left in the pen uh, to fill up the 150 boxes. Had the guys had the proper harvest net and had been able to get it done. It took them all day to harvest that first time. And uh, it was it was Keystone Cops. Uh, they just didn't get it done in that day. So we left we left to Cebu with what we had. Uh, and the second harvest more money was spent on a net, my bad, the holes in the net were too big, I uh, should have listened to Gabriel, he knew, but uh, again at that time it was budgetary, budgetary restraints. Uh, oh, crying poor again, was less after spending a million pesos. Of, uh, the net we should have got, uh, the amount of fish we lost because of the damage versus the cost savings on the net. Was but they were stolen, money. weren't they, Brian? And now it's damage. Some money uh, having the wrong net. But, uh, you know, first time out, you, you learn as you go. Uh, 